So I know that you're all together, so we can move these chairs a little closer. Yeah. We're just going to wait till exactly 2 o'clock, folks, because we're going to walk out. Because I do call people out of town. Uh, yeah. 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 Babes, and we learned that you know we learned along the way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just things have to fall in love. It's amazing. 
Yeah, he called oh, us and told me about it. He goes, if I cover my eye, I'm fine. So they call me Captain. Going like this. Oh. When I wear my <laughs> patch, yeah, right. Get a patch. When they wear my patch, they call me Captain Carl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I can have your attention, please. My name is Susan Winkelstein, and I'm a funeral director with Chicago Jewish Funerals. And just a gentle reminder for those of you that are present here at the graveside, if you have a cell phone with you, just make sure that it's on the silent mode or shut off completely. Thank you. Officiating this service this afternoon will be Rabbi Michael Weinberg from Temple Beth Israel in Skokie. We've come together today, my friends, sharing our sorrow to bid farewell to Alice Lieberman. We've come together to recall the blessings of her life. We've come together to thank God for all that was good and true in her life and for the many precious memories which shall endure. And so now in this hour of grief, let us incline our ears to listen to the words of the psalmist words which bring to us the message of God's nearness. I will lift up mine eyes unto the mountains. From whence shall my help come? My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel doth neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall keep thee from all evil. He shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall guard thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forever. Ms. Morley David. Adonai roi lo echsar, bino dideshi arbitseni al mei minuchot inahaleni nafshi shavei, ancheni b'magal eitzerik l'ma'an shema, gam ki elech v'geitzal marvet lo ira raki ata imadi, shif tachal mishan techa hema yonach amuni, ha'aruch lefanai shulchan neged zorarai, ishanta v'ashem em roshi kosi revaya, Ach tov v'chesed yudafuni kol yomei chayai v'shavti b'vet Adonai l'orech yamin If you happen to know the words to the 23rd Psalm or if you've picked up one of these service pamphlets on the inside you'll find the words that we could say together The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. 
anointest my head with the oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Death has summoned our beloved Alice Lieberman. Our souls cry out unto thee, O Lord, what are we? Are we the creatures of dust, whose destiny is but to return to the dust from which we came? The ancient sage has taught us that the human spirit is the lamp of the Lord. Not even the darkness of death can extinguish that lamp, God's light, which has been kindled in the sanctuary of the human soul. Therefore, O Lord, we thank thee in this solemn hour for that which was deathless in the life of our beloved Alice and which is now revealed to us in all its beauty, for her love that united us in life and which death cannot sever, for her companionship which we shared along life's path and which still continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of her heart and mind which brought us joy and happiness and now have become a precious heritage of the spirit. For all these and more we give thee our praise. Grant unto us, O Lord, the strength of all the generations of our people, who in the face of bereavement proclaimed, Adonai Natan Adonai Lakach, Yishem Adonai Mevorach. The Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We've gathered today to bid a final farewell to Alice Lieberman of blessed memory and to pay loving tribute to her memory. It is important to note that the few of us standing here at her grave are aware that there are many of you who are with us through the technology of live stream. Although we cannot see you, we feel your presence and just knowing that you are there is a source of comfort for the mourners. Anyone who knew Alice knew that she was devoted to her family, knew that she was devoted to her friends. She was devoted to her work. She was devoted to her congregation, our own Temple Beth Israel. And she was devoted to the idea of living a life of meaning. A life filled with an appreciation of reading and theater. A life filled with learning. A life filled with joy, even in the face of challenges and setbacks. A life filled with gratitude and with love. Today we honor Alice's life with words of tribute. First from her husband, Carl, and then from her son, Louis. Everybody that knows me knows when I go to a Simca or a funeral or whatever and have a special relationship with the person being honored or memorialized that they're going to get a poem from me. And the poem is a sign of love and appreciation and honoring the person. So, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a tribute to Alice. Annie Alice is how she was known, so it's only fitting that I render this poem. She came on the scene in 36, moved to California so her sister and mom could receive a health fix. There she made friends with Marilyn and Pauline, which was really great. They've been close with each other over 75 years. It was their fate attended Fairfax High School and UCLA too, returned to Chicago and to Carl said, I do. <laughs> Lived in an apartment in Albany and Rogers Park and had Nancy on a January 27th in 61 when it was dark. In 63, bought a house in Skokie and son Lewis came along. He was a handful and a challenge and on that, I'm not wrong. <laughs> In 1994, Lewis married a wonderful gal named Diane, 
and we love her very much and became her number one fan. In 98, Kayla came along. In 01, Aaron was born. Watching them grow into wonderful and zestful adults, a very positive impression of them we did form. Alice was a wonderful teacher at Nobel, Piccolo, and Swift, teaching many of primary grade, retired in 92, and lived a life of leisure and travel. She had it made. Went on vacations, 11 cruises in Israel too. She loved to read and shop. Alice would always give Carl something to do. A person who everyone wanted on their trivia team, she knew all the minute details, and so it would seem. She loved eating whitefish bass and other kinds of fish, and a good roast or omelet was amongst her favorite dish. But most of all, she loved her family, especially the kids. Being with them at events is what she really digs. She excelled at their bat and bar mitzvah and enjoyed having her family and friends there. She loved all the trappings that came with her major affair. Alice supported me in all my endeavors, and even more than that, she took Lewis to Hebrew school, and next to Rabbi Lord, she sat. My love for her will never fade. I have many memories, memories I shall hold dear. So I end this poem with the promise that my love of Alice will always be near. Alice, I love you. I miss you. You will always be in my heart. Oh, there's people. Um, I'm not a poem person. One day I might pick it up when uh, my father no longer can do it, but uh, I'll keep let him do that and people can laugh at him. Um, the rabbi told me I couldn't come up here without saying writing something down because I might lose my place. So uh, if I'm looking at my phone, it's not because I'm texting somebody else. Um, I just want to say a few words on behalf of myself and my sister. Um, thinking about what to say was a struggle. My mother had many different layers to her. It was hard to find a direction to describe what I wanted to say today. But I can definitely say without a doubt that she was a major influence on both my sister and I growing up. We had a wonderful childhood. We never wanted for anything. We never knew that my parents faced any kind of problems monetarily or anything like was going on in the world. They sheltered us pretty well with that. Um, uh, my mother would always say when we got, uh, got into an argument, you know, she, she was a very dynamic woman. And every time we got in an argument, she'd go, she would always say to me, she goes, wait until you have kids, you'll understand. <laughs> no words were ever truer. As a young child, we knew that the family was important. We took vacations together. We went to events together. We did everything as a family. Um, it was an outshoot of what my mother and father always did. They were always together from the day that they got married, except when he took a sabbatical, which was a nice vac year vacation for him, uh, <laughs> to the day she passed away, or the day we had to actually put her into the Abington. My mom and dad were inseparable, and as a teenager, I was a very rebellious child. My mother was a very overprotective woman, which I understood later on because of her childhood and upbringing and losing her parents very young. Her father passed away when she was 18. Her mother passed away when she was 31. She was always making sure that we wanted to stay together as a family. As a teenager, I became a very rebellious child. As my friends know, I would tell them what a pain in the butt my mother was, and she always knew where I was, wherever I'd be. I went with my friends pre-driving to Old Orchard, to the bowling alley. Lo and behold, there was my mom in the orange jacket, which Mark Turnauer said was her radar jacket. Um, but she was always there for me. At a young age, I really didn't understand why she felt the way she did or what she did. And of course, as I grew older, and as I uh, had my own children, I started to understand the motives as a parent. All she wanted to do was to protect me, wanted to make sure that I was all right. Once I moved out of the house, of course, to, with their help, because they wanted to get me out of the house, um, I think she felt the same way. We were both better off and we became closer at that point. Uh, I got to go before my dad. Uh, she taught us to be family first and foremost and always take care of each other. Family didn't include my mom and my dad and my sister, but also friends. She had her childhood friends since she was eight years old. And until the day she died, Marilyn and Pauline were still part of her life, still calling to find out how she was. Because of that, she taught me the strength of friendship and what it means, and also how to find good friends, the ones who would be there when they needed you, when you needed them. 
You'd be there for them and they're carried on. Pick your friends who have a strong sense of family, she said. If some of my best friends are here today, they all are. Um, the friends from junior high and high school, they're not just friends, they are my family as well. It's because of her that I have lifelong friends that I was able to hold on and knew what it took to be part of that family. To her, many of my friends became her family as well. She loved all of you, but she had a special relationship with my friend Ricky, who's now out in California. He was her hairdresser, but he was also her friend. I would know what was going on in their lives through Ricky, more so than even my mom or my dad. He knew everything was going on in my life. I'd go to get my hair cut and we'd talk and i go, did you know, did you know? And he goes, eh, yeah, of course I knew. Your mom already told me. <laughs> you know, I could, should have known, and hindsight is twenty twenty. When we were in high school, there'd be a lot of times that my friends would come over when my parents were out of the house because we were doing things like drinking and stuff. And lo and behold, they'd show up. There's my mom and my dad. We're trying to get out of the house and there's Ricky and my mom just sitting there having a conversation, trying to pull her away. Dale, Mark, and I would be saying, come on, let's go. We're feeling a little embarrassed. We've got to get out of here. But nope, that relationship started then and never ended. Uh, after I got married and had children, I started to realize a lot of things that my mom did or said was starting to make a lot more sense to me. Too bad children when they're growing up just don't get it. I know mine don't, but they're starting to now that they're becoming young adults. My mother loved her daughter-in-law, Diane, her grandchildren, Kayla and Aaron. It took a little bit of time for Diane to understand the dynamics of our family. You hear stories about families, big families. When they sit down to dinner, there's a food frenzy. Everybody's grabbing for food. Well, we had a little different frenzy. It's called the talking frenzy. During a dinner table, at dinner, we would always have major conversations. But in the Lieberman family, you talk, and you talk, and we talk a lot. And the only way to get a word in edgewise was to interrupt somebody to get your point across. <laughs> Diane was always used to the idea that if you talk, you listen until they're done, and then you say what you say. It took her a while to understand how this worked, but I think she gets it, especially now that her children also bear the same type of gift to gap with the Robin family does. My mom also had a very special bond with Kayla, of course, being a girl, but also because Kayla and my mom are very similar people. They're very strong willed. My mom was a teacher, and Kayla is working on becoming a teacher. They both love to shop. I remember, and my dad can attest to this, my mom and I got into a lot of arguments. And when we got in arguments, instead of my mom getting more upset, she would storm off, go out the door, and drive somewhere. Found out that she went so shopping. Well, the <laughs> apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Kayla being back home, we get into a lot of spats. When we argue, Kayla goes running out the door, and she ends up usually going to Target and to go shopping. She was very proud of Aaron and all of his accomplishments in sports, and as he grew up to be a strong young man. One thing she loved most from Aaron was called her Aaron hugs. Whenever we were with him at the end of the night, and I, for some reason, I remember all the Passover seders and everywhere we went for dinner. She would say, I can't leave without my hair and hug. She says, I can't get through the day knowing that I saw Aaron without that special hug. It was very special to him. She was so proud of her grandchildren and the young adults that they had become. I go on for hours with different stories, what she taught me and Nancy through life, and she was always there for us. But I want to impress upon all of you that she was extremely loving, extremely caring, she had her opinions and she said it, but the most important thing was she's keeping the family together and she did. She had a wonderful life. Please celebrate the 62 years of marriage she had with my dad, the 85 years which she lived as she thought she would never live past 60 as both her parents died very young. Please celebrate her life and remember, she can live forever in our hearts. With these words of tribute, so eloquently shared, and so heartfeltly spoken, we add words of prayer. We reach out, all of us who are here today, both in person and virtually, and turn to you who are nearest and dearest to her. We extend to you the hope and the prayer that the God of life and death who gave her to you for so many years will soon be manifest to you as the God of healing and the God of comfort, granting to you the strength that you need to bear the burden of your loss and sending to you solace to soothe the ache in your hearts. Even as we pray in her memory, Zechert Tzadikah Livracha, may the memory of this righteous woman be for blessing. Amen.
Almighty God, who governest all things with infinite wisdom and mercy, and who guidest the destinies of man, as a father dost thou love us and showerest thy blessings upon us, Therefore we shall not murmur even when sorrow befalls us, but with humility and unfaltering trust accept thy decrees. In joy and in sorrow alike, we praise thy goodness and acknowledge thy justice. We remember that we are but strangers upon earth. Like a shadow our life fleeth away. Help us, O God, so to walk in thy sight, that when the few years of our earthly pilgrimage are ended, we may be ready to meet our end with tranquil mind. To thee we look for comfort and strength when, as now, one of our beloved is taken from us, and thus a link is broken in the chain of love which binds us in family union. Though we now walk in the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for thou art with us. Be praised, O eternal our God, in all thy dispensations, and sanctified be thy name, forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise. Ve'am alei rachamim shochein b'amramim, amtsei menuchan nechonat zachar kan fei ha'shechina, v'ma'alot kidoshim u'tahorim k'zor ha'reki ha'mazirim, et nishmat chodesh bat leibu v'shashana sh'alcha l'olama, ba'al ha'rachamim, אסתירה וסייף את כנפיו לעולמים, ויצרו בצור החיים את נשמתה. אדוני הוא נחל עתה, ותנוח בשלום על משכבה ונאמר, אמן. O God, full of compassion, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest under the wings of your presence, and to the soul of Alice Lieberman, our loved one who has entered eternity. Master of mercy, let her find refuge forever in the shadow of your wings. Bring her into your presence, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. The eternal God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. Like the stars by day, our beloved de dead are not seen by mortal eyes, yet they shine on forever. Theirs is eternal peace. Let us be thankful then for the companionship that continues in a love stronger than death. Sanctifying the name of God, we honor Alice's memory with the hallowed words of Kaddish. Yitkadar v'yitkadar shenei yada V'yalmar divrach v'yitay v'yamnich marfutay Bakayichon of Yamechon, Kayed of our Beit Israel, Bagalai of Isman Kariv in Ru Amen. Reish may rab and Varach for Alami Amel Maya, Vit Varach, Vishtabach, Vit Baal, Vit Raman, Vit Nasef, Vit Hadar, Vit Alor, Vit Halal, Shemed Kudsha, Beruchu. Ve'elah min kol birchata v'shirata, tishvachata v'nechamata, v'amiran v'yalma v'inru, amen. Ve'hei shalam ha'rabah min shemai v'chayim, aleinu v'yarko yisrael v'inru, amen. Ve'eseh shalom v'nomad, v'ya aseh shalom, aleinu v'yarko yisrael v'inru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to you, Haman. May God soon comfort you in which the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. And we say, Amen. You may be seated. Friends, this brings to conclusion the liturgy here that we say at the gravesite. We turn our attention now to what's known in our tradition as the mitzvah of Levayat Amet. The mitzvah will accompany the dead to their final rest. In just a moment, the workers will lower the casket and lower a cement cover over it. And then anyone who so chooses can participate in this mitzvah by shoveling at least three shovels of earth onto the grave. The season has gloves that you can wear if you like so that uh, each person can handle the shovel with gloves on. 
Uh, and after we had a chance to participate in this mitzvah, we turn our attention to the mitzvah of Nikum Avelin, the comforting of the mourners. I'll ask all of you to stand in two rows facing each other to create an aisle. So as the mourners walk from the grave towards their cars, we have an opportunity to speak words of comfort to them immediately following the burial.
on behalf of my family, I want to thank all of you who are here today. I appreciate your presence more than you could know. I'll always remember this uh, as I say goodbye to my love of my life. I grieve, but I celebrate all the wonderful years we had together, all the great places we went to and saw, all the wonderful friends we made, and the two wonderful children that we made together, the love of our life. And my grandchildren, thank you so much for being here. I love all of you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, everybody. I'd like to announce that the Lieberman family will be receiving condolence calls later today from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Great Room at the Avador 650 Waukegan Road in Glenview. Again, that's 4 to 7 p.m. today.